सो आई अंडरस्टैंड इट्स अ वेरी वेरी ब्रॉड टॉपिक वेन यू टॉकिंग अबाउट वॉट इज फाइनेंस ऑल अबाउट लेट मी ट्राई डी कोड इट विथ अ लॉट ऑफ एग्जाम्पल सो लेट्स जस्ट जम्प राइट इन टू इट सो यू कैन सी एन एयरक्राफ्ट ओवर हियर आई डोट नो इफ यू सीन द सीरीज कॉल मैनिफेस्ट समथिंग बट एनी वेज सो ओवर हियर वेन यू लुकिंग एट दिस एयरक्राफ्ट इफ लेट से देर आर हंड्रेड सीट्स इन अ प्लेन द एयरलाइन कंपनी इज गोइंग टू बी सेलिंग हंड्रेड एंड टू टिकट्स दे गोइंग टू सेल टू एक्स्ट्रा टिकट्स ऑन एन एवरेज टू पीपल विल नॉट टर्न अप two people will be late miss the flight cancel last moment etc and the airline is going to be able to generate two tickets worth of revenue for free but it's also a possibility that two people turn up 102 people all the people turn up for the flight and you might have to compensate them you will have to compensate them for the uh, delay in flight you'll have to shift them to a different flight there is a reputational damage also etc so you have to evaluate that how do we evaluate the cost how do we decide that we need to sell two extra free tickets that's based on binomial distribution that's based on pass data analysis on an average how many people are missing what is the probability of both the people turning up for the flight etc so we need to do that analysis so when you're talking about quants it is not exactly you know maths maths per se but it's about the application of it because i know a lot of students are little scared of maths but it's not like that when you're studying finance you study predominantly three topics over here so one is going to be your time value of money all the money related calculation even if you're a doctor and you're taking a home loan you need to understand the interest related calculation you need to understand your retirement finances your retirement planning and all so money related calculation is one part second we are looking at is the probability part so whenever we are trying to make any kind of decisions we need to work on the probability aspect so for example over here uh, when you are looking at chennai whether the match is taking place in chennai or mumbai so the probability of csk winning would be higher if the match is in chennai but if it is in mumbai the probability of csk winning is lower and mumbai indians winning is higher so how do we take decisions how do we take bets bets i'm not talking about the gambling bets per se but say suppose how much inventory if there is a sweet shop you're running how much inventory i would be having on a sunday versus weekdays or a holiday is going to be very very different so how do you analyze what is the probability of having more sales what is the probability of more people turning up so we need to study those we need to understand those in time value of money say for example if an individual is starting off let's say an individual starts at the age of 20 and he saves it becomes 2.1 million dollars let's say and if you're starting at the age of 30 with the same amount of emi this amount is going to become only 1.2 so you see the amount of the huge difference that's there 1.2 and 2.1 just because somebody started 10 years earlier that is the power of compounding so all the money related calculation comes in over here in time value of money whenever you take any sort of decision for the future we need to understand probability over here what is the probability of let's say oil prices increasing or decreasing based on that what is the probability that indigo airlines share price will increase or decrease so based on those factors we'll be able to take decisions and analyze that so probability becomes very important but 80% of quants when i'm looking at the finance aspect it's going to be statistics so analyzing past data in order to make future forecasts and all so you have to analyze past data you need to see the trends and analysis and all you'll have to do that so statistics becomes very very important it is 80% of your quants is going to be statistics so even if you have not studied quants and all in detail or you not focused on maths earlier it is fine but we need to see the application of quants on the finance side next we are looking at the subject economics let's say so when i'm looking at economics we are broadly looking at macro micro international trade etc we've seen countries like greece going bankrupt we've seen multiple banks in ireland going bankrupt we've seen hyperinflation in certain countries so economics again from a finance context becomes very very interesting and very important say suppose i'll talk about the macro economics so hyperinflation your entire currency's value gets eroded in country like venezuela so this wad of notes is basically going to be able to buy just toilet paper let's say so it is that important and you have to connect it with the finance side of things for example when the government comes up with an ayushman bharat scheme what is going to be the impact on the hospital industry what will be the impact on interest inflation rate macroeconomics because if say for example interest rates are going down your home loan and car loans become cheap and home loans and car loans or homes and cars are basically very bulky expenses or investments that people make so 
the moment interest rate goes down, home loan, car loan becomes cheaper and therefore the demand increases and the affordability increases. And then, you know, with the real estate particularly, the entire cycle starts. So how do you look at macroeconomics and the impact of it on the financial sectors and different industries and all is something we need to understand. Microeconomics, demand and supply. How important it was for Jio to enter for so many apps and OTT platforms to do well. In fact, Jio itself is entering the OTT space as well. It's already entered, but it's trying to be very, very predatory. Like, you know, charging very, very low prices in order to capture the market. So demand supply, microeconomics. What is the market share of the company? Is it creating a monopoly in the market? Because if you're creating a monopoly, you'll be able to generate a huge amount of return. Telecom sector. We are looking at three players broadly. Jio, Vodafone and Airtel. And those three players are controlling the entire industry. So they will be able to generate a decent amount of return. But because of government regulation, they may not be able to generate too much profits beyond what they're doing right now. But the scale, because of the population again, it becomes very interesting to see how they will be able to make money. So macroeconomics, microeconomics, demand supply, market structures, all of those things. And then your international economics. Now say for example, when you're looking at a company like an Infosys, which is predominantly an export driven company. So in that case, they will be impacted by how the rupee dollar exchange rates are faring in the markets because their revenue is coming in the dollar form. So we need to look at that as well. When you're looking at Infosys, when you're looking at TCS exporting companies, even the companies who import a lot of raw material, industries that import raw material, oil, we are one of the largest importers of oil. So in that case also, the oil prices internationally, globally, and the exchange rates become very important, right? The exchange rate fluctuations are very, very important. International trade and all. So say, for example, it's been a while, but when the steel prices domestically had uh, increased and internationally they had increased even more and there were some supply chain issues with China, a lot of people started exporting more steel than the domestic market and domestic market was suffering. So because of that, the government had to impose temporary duty or something on exports of steel. So how the policy changes, what is the international trade like, how are the markets faring, what is the demand and supply, understanding the industry, etc. becomes extremely important. So looking at economics in the context of finance. Now, there's another one, financial reporting analysis. I really enjoy looking at Amul ads and all the way they play on words and everything. So this was one of the posters they had released when the Satyam scam happened. Satyam Sharam scandal. So when you're looking at Vijay Malya, everybody understands United Breweries. But how many of you know Ramalinga Raju from the Satyam computer? So that was quite a major scam and then Satyam was taken over by Tech Mahindra. Basically what happened is, so when I'm talking about financial reporting analysis, some students get a little skeptical that it is about accounts. It's about reading financial reports. You have to be in a position where you're able to read financial reports, understand balance sheet, PL, etc. of the company and do a lot of analysis for a variety of reasons. So would I be able to read a Satyam annual report and be able to understand that yes, there is probably a scam and these people are not quoting the finances correctly because PwC was with Satyam. PwC helped Satyam in fudging figures, right? And then of course they were put behind bars and everything. So for example, when I'm looking at an Adani Hindenburg report, so can I study Adani's annual report, understand it and take decisions based on that and evaluate whether actually there is a problem or a fraud or not or money laundering or whatever things we were looking at, whether by studying an annual report, can I decide whether to invest in the company or not, whether I want to give loan to a company or not, can I analyze the annual reports, looking at annual reports, can I judge that whether this company is going to grow or not, what is the strategy like and everything, because yes, the numbers also reflect whether you're making a lot of capital expenditure, investing in the business, we can study cash flow statement, PL and everything. And there's also something called the management discussion analysis, which is a part of financial report. So analyzing that also, if I take XYZ decision for my business, for my company, how will the annual report look like? What will be my projections for the next five years? If I take up XYZ strategy, how will the financial statements look like? How will the profitability of the company get impacted? If I do too much of acquisitions together, how will my financials look like? Expansion plans, etc. All those factors need to be evaluated, right? Then we're looking at subject called corporate finance. So when you're sitting in the finance department of your own company and you're taking all the financial decisions for the company, we call it corporate finance, the financial decision making of the company. For example, let's say there is a metro project that the Larson and Tubro is getting. Now it has to bid for the project. It has to do an entire capital budgeting exercise and evaluate whether or not or what price should I uh, tender for the project, right? So whether to take up a project or not, whether to invest in a factory or not, whether to start a product or not, mergers, acquisitions, when Vistara and the Tata group got into the aviation space. So how will my financials look like? What is the price at which I should go for the merger and acquisition? Should I or should I not go for this acquisition? For example, ITC acquired the brand Savlon. So should I acquire a brand called Savlon? What should be the correct valuation? How will it impact and how fast could my growth be? How would it impact my profitability and my market share? So all those factors. Should I give dividend or not? I want to borrow money. Now, should I raise money in the form of loans or should 
I borrow money from equity markets? How do I raise money? For example, Tata and Reliance of late, they have decided and they have gone debt free. So should I be debt free or should I have a lot of loans on my balance sheet? A real estate company, for example, would be having relatively higher amount of loan. ITC also had to decide whether I want to diversify beyond tobacco and get into FMCG and hotel industry and all. Today, ITC also needs to take a decision whether to split their shares into hotel business separately and roll it out uh, separately, divestiture and spin off and split off and all that. Should we go for that? Should we go for that kind of corporate structuring where I'm splitting the shares? So how do we take those decisions? Corporate finance decisions. All the financial decision making within a company is going to be corporate financial, is going to be a part of corporate finance. Very interesting. Then we're looking at equity. So when you're looking at equity as a subject, so we're talking about the investments. When I'm talking about corporate finance, I'm talking from the perspective of being within the company. When I'm inside the company and I'm taking decisions, I'm talking about corporate finance. But when I'm evaluating investments as an outsider, as an investor, and I'm planning to invest or not to invest in a company, I'm looking at equity. Now, when you're looking at equity investments and all, we are broadly looking at two ways of investments. One is your fundamental analysis. One is your technical analysis. So fundamental analysis is where we're looking at long-term investments and all. Technical analysis is where we're looking at short-term trading aspect. So when I'm looking at long-term investments, I will be looking at broadly the economy, the industry and the company. We analyze these three aspects before making an investment in a company, before we are analyzing a company. So I do more of fundamentals and not technicals as such. So when I'm looking at fundamentals, let's say the example, how is Ayushman Bharat scheme going to be impacting the hospital's valuation? So when you come out with this scheme in the economy, how is the Apollo or a Fortis healthcare going to get impacted? I want to understand that. Or say for example, government comes up with a scrappage policy in the automobile sector. So how is it going to be impacting the auto and the auto ancillary companies? A lot of auto ancillary companies like tire companies, Nosil, BKT, a lot of variety of companies manufacturing horns and manufacturing the tech part of the cars and all. So all those factors. So how is a semiconductor shortage create, have an impact on the automobile industry when it happened post COVID? So we have to analyze the economic aspect. We analyze the industry, how the industry is faring. For example, when we're looking at EV versus petrol, cars and internal combustion engine so how is the industry faring or how is the industry doing in terms of renewable space so you analyze the industry in detail after the macroeconomic and all those impacts how is the industry doing like for example if i'm looking at let's say the telecom industry so how is the telecom industry doing today we have an oligopolistic structure with barely three players over here and vodafone again is a very very small player geo again expanding into variety of services airtel is also having those fiber and all those things they're doing so how are the two expanding how is geo trying to capitalize with OTT and everything. Airtel also has OTT, but Geo is also starting with the finance services and all of those things. So what is the industry structure like? Where is the industry headed? So you analyze the industry in detail and then you get into the nitty gritties of the company where you're looking at the balance sheet, PL, cash flow statement, everything for the industry. So if I'm looking at, let's say a paint industry, so Asian paints, Nerolac, Berger, so Asian being one of the leading players in the industry. Nerolac has got a better share when it comes to automobile paint, automotive paint, but when it comes to those wall paint, decorative paint, Asian paints does better. So what are the price points? What is the balance sheet like? What is the market cap of the company? What is the PL account? What are the ratios? What is the efficiency of the company? What is the profitability of the company? So when I'm looking at the company's analysis, branding, strategy, marketing strategy, management, corporate governance, I look at everything about the company when I'm trying to decide whether or not to invest. So I need to understand the economy. I need to understand the industry. And then I need to look at the company within that industry, different companies and evaluate whether or not and how I want to go about investing in that, whether it's worth it or not. That is fundamental analysis, where I'm looking at the fundamentals of the company in order to invest. Technical analysis is going to be based on prices, charts, patterns, etc., where I'm looking at different indicators. Also, you know, you'd, you'd hear about people talking about the market sentiment. So there is a lot of behavioral analysis as to how people are going to be reacting in the markets. So based on those factors, your technical analysis is going to be done. So you have to understand numbers, you need to understand patterns, you need to understand charts, you need to learn technical indicators. And based on that, you will be able to get into technical analysis and get into trading. As per SEBI data, Stock Exchange Board of India, 90% active traders in the market lose money. I think it was an average loss of 1,25,000 per trader. So if you want to be a trader, you need to be a professional trader who's following the markets from 9 to 3.30, who's learning indicators, who's following news markets, global markets, commodity markets, and understanding the impact of even a federal bank, what the US is doing, the central bank of the US is taking decisions. How are their unemployment numbers, interest, etc.? 
numbers and all and how does that impact the indian economy in terms of foreign inflows and everything so you have to know all these things and then you make money being a professional trader in the market you start learning the markets you start understanding the markets as in you learn and you work in the markets in order to develop those skill set so either you're a professional trader or you're a gambler there is no part time trader so you can't be a part time trader doing an xyz and becoming a part time trader and all that is not going to work you can look at the statistics 90% of active traders lose money in the market so you have to be very very careful about these things